Dr. Wahlberg, great to have you back. It's my honor to be here, always a pleasure. Excellent. So we know you're presenting a study at the conference looking at the development of a prediction model for venous thromboembolism in glioblastoma patients. Can you share a little bit about how common this is in these patients? Yes, so, so a deep vein thrombosis mm -hmm. is basically blood clots that can form in your veins and most likely uh, most often in the lower extremities and are a real serious mm -hmm. issue because it, uh, they develop in about a third of patients and uh, like as I always tell my patients, as long as they are in the legs, they can cause a lot of symptoms, mm -hmm. but that is not uh, the real severe part is if they break loose, go into your heart and from sure. there into your lung and that is, uh, can be very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And so a big part of it is, is like with everything is like you, how can we identify patients who are at risk? So we know that patients with glioblastoma, there is something happening in their blood that makes them much, much more likely to suffer from the deep vein thrombosis and from these events. So that is a part, one part. Then other parts certainly that contribute is like how well a patient's doing. It's like if you're paralyzed, if you're not moving as much, these, all of them had brain surgery. So all of that puts certain risks on them. But we really went out to go a little bit deeper. How can we uh, develop a score well, based on certain parameters that might help clinicians to really say, okay, this is somebody really on high risk. You, might we it be even necessary to treat them prophylactically? So based on that several years ago, uh, members of my group started out like at MD Anderson yes. uh, were trained and looked there at all the patients of the brain tumor patients and uh, with glioblastoma and looked at it, what are the risk factors. And uh, because that is very different than the models that exist in general oncology and cancer. Sure. So they identified is certainly uh, that gender, male gender seemed to be at a higher risk. Uh, performance status, how much people can mm -hmm. do things, and uh, and weight, body mass index. That these are really crucial factors. And uh, then what we did is we used all these different pieces and created a model, basically where we can plug it in, and then we get a score. And the score is going to tell us uh, is this patient a high risk patient mm -hmm. or not. Um, but at the end of the day. We know that MD Anderson, as great as it is, is, is can be very dif different from other parts sure. of the world. So it's a selective population. So you want to check out, does that hold true when you go into other settings? So uh, over time, I moved on uh, to Detroit and been practicing there at Henry Ford. So we looked at our patients there and to see if that model that w that we developed earlier, if that would hold up with uh, a more general yes. population. And so we did the same, we identified patients and then brought them through that system. And so what we found is like the, the sensitivity, the ability to find mm -hmm. these events, that is really high, it's like 80%. Yeah. That is really a lot better than the general score. However, the, the specificity that it is really yes. true um, that was very high too in the first, but that dropped unfortunately mm -hmm. down and that is probably part of it is, uh, is uh, has something to do with the patient population. Sure. And, but it's still it's like at uh, close to 50%, which uh, doesn't sound that great, but it's still way, way better than that general score that was developed earlier. So what kinds of refinements do you think will need to be made in this predictive model? I think it's like the first thing is, is like uh, go back. A lot of them seems to have to be doing with the, that performance status and maybe we have to weigh that a little bit less and then go back. We, we're still going to need a bigger population. So we're reaching out to different people. We're looking at other populations maybe that we can use from clinical trials because these are always patients that are very closely monitored to um, get a more real world uh, yeah. picture. Well, how can, is it too early to use this predictive model then? I think it's still a little bit too early because we really want to be sure what we're doing is right. But uh, uh, my hope is of course, and our team is that we can refine it and then uh, look more prospectively 
and to make sure that it is right and then because then we can really start an intervention to protect people who are at high risk to maybe either like a different more activity or uh, might be even more anticoagulation early on to uh, prevent that and that would be would be a great study and because different studies have done before have been done before but one of the the challenges was always to accrue enough patients and uh, but if we have a higher if we know what we're looking at the, it would make it a lot easier mm -hmm.